out of pure curiosity, if you have started coming to Crossbridge to worship in, let's just say, uh, since 2020 when everything fell apart, at some point there till now, you're kind of newer to Crossbridge, would you just throw your hand up for me? Um, check that out. Nice, look at that. Everybody there. How cool is that? Thank you. Man, I love that you're here. You old folks that are here, I like that you're here too. <laughs> right? I love this. I love that we get to do this, but you know what's funny is if you are somewhat newer to Crossbridge, something happened that, that somehow, um, you know, you filled out a connect card or something, and now uh, you get this mail that comes to your house. There's an envelope that comes, and you're wondering when it comes to your house, like, why are they sending me some sort of card, and there's a letter with it that I'm probably not going to read, and so I'm just going to put that on the side. Because most of the times when we get things from places, they're asking us for money or something like that, and you're thinking, I don't really want it. So there is something for you in there, just so you know, so you don't have to throw it away. But it, it kind of dawned on me that uh, over the last three years, we talk a lot about this idea of soaping. You get a soap card in the mail, and I realized... We've not really refreshed what that means for our church, what that means for those who are coming in to worship with us. So over the next four weeks, we're going to be re-looking at this idea of what in the world is soap? What is this church talking about when they say that? And if you were with us three years ago, some of this may be familiar to you. It's a great reminder, and it is no less important now than it was then, even though if you're like, oh yeah. Great, we all need reminders, amen? So SOAP simply is an acronym that we use to describe our approach to reading the Bible. We use this acronym uh, because we know that SOAP is something that we all need and we all use, hopefully daily, multiple times a day, right? If you go to the bathroom, we're begging you, please use SOAP right? This is good. If you're about to handle food and cook, wash your hands beforehand. If it's raw meat, you wash your hands with good soap afterwards. How many of you learn new things about soap when COVID hit? Anybody else besides me? It's like, man, there's different kinds of soap you got to have, better soaps, not soaps, how to wash your hands, and like people doing weird things. You're like, oh man, there's a lot more to this, but we learned that, that soaping, and we understand this together, it's normal for our life that soaping keeps us clean, it helps us fight disease, infections, and it's necessary for a healthy life in junior hires. <laughs> yeah, see, there we go. When we talk about soap for the next four weeks, these are the letters, S-O-A-P, this is what it stands for, this is what we're going to be talking about. We're talking about scripture, observation, application, and prayer. It's not an acronym that we came up with on our own. A lot of churches use this, and, and we just love it. So back in the day when we started this, I called a pastor down, in, uh, down the shore at a church called Fusion Church to ask them about this um, soaping and what they do and how they do it. And it was so funny because he said to me, and I'll never forget it, he said, nothing has changed, changed our church more than this. And I thought, what? Y like, are you guys dirty that you need this much soap? You know, really? Like, what, what is the deal? And he said, Jimmy, in the life of our church, and I'll, he's got this great South African accent, he says, it was a game changer. Um, I, it's, I, if you asked me three years ago, when we started this, and you asked me today, did it make a difference? I would simply say it's a game changer. I wouldn't use that accent. I don't know what I would use, what accent you would say I have, but listen, if you've soaked with us since we started in 2019, can I just tell you what you've journeyed through so far? So let's just pretend you've read it all. And, and if, has anybody else missed at least one day in the last three years besides me? Okay, great. I love those hands real quick. Thank you for honesty. We're all there, right? But if you've soaked with us so far, you've read 33 different books of the Old Testament and 15 books of the New Testament multiple times. That means 48 out of 66 books of the entire Bible you've read already in the last three years, just a chapter at a time. You've read over, you've read about 1,085 chapters of the Bible. How cool is that? You have completed uh, about seven of the ten longest books in the Bible. We're working through Psalms. That one you just slow chunk away, right? But you have finished seven out of the ten longest books, including Isaiah and Jeremiah, which we're pretty much beasts to get through, right? Right. We've read the biographies of Jesus written by his followers six times. We have gone back to Jesus over and over and over. I mean, 
I, I don't know, for some of you, this is maybe really encouraging to go, wow, I didn't think I did that much. That's pretty cool. It didn't feel like that for others of you, just hearing that sounds overwhelming, and you're like, I'm glad I bounced early because I could never have done this. I think that's because at Crossbridge, we know stepped into a relationship with Jesus, trying to follow him, figuring out what he's saying. How do I follow him? What's this look like? And there are still some, and I love this, that are here today and that are online with us who are saying, I don't have a relationship with Jesus, but I'm very curious and I have a ton of questions. And I'm grateful that you're here. But each time that I sit with anybody in our church, and, and I get similar questions often as a pastor it just happens. One of them is like, Jimmy, how, how in the world do I connect with God? How do I hear him and know what he wants for me in this situation that I'm dealing with? And many of you know my response is almost always the same. My response is always the same. Well, I don't know. Tell me, how has your time with Jesus been? How has your time sitting with him in prayer been? How has your time regularly reading the scriptures been? What's he speaking to you? And this is the point that I get very different looks and answers. All sorts of different responses. Believe it or not, I have come to realize that those who are exploring their faith or are new to their faith actually read the scriptures more than many mature Christians around them. I've sat across the table from numerous people here at our church who have told me outright that they have been in a relationship with Jesus. They were basically born in the pew, right? They, they've been doing this forever, but they cannot remember the last time that they actively opened their Bible to read. As a matter of fact, some might even say, I'm not even sure where my Bible is. I think I have one or 15, right? That, that's where they are. And I'll, I'll just be candid. It breaks my heart when I hear this. It actually hurts and even deeper, I believe, it breaks the heart of God. But let's be honest. When it comes to the Bible, I get that this can be confusing, right? Have you read anything that, that's made you go, oh, what? I mean, have you ever spent time in the Bible before and you get confused? Like, okay, come on. If you were soaping with us last month, amen, right? You read through Revelation with us. Pastor Will walked us through with videos, a guide, and I'm still going, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. Why is there dragons and pregnant people and, you know, all these scrolls and angels and trumpets? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you missed a great book to read that was exciting and confusing, right? This happens all the time when we read the Bible. And when we get confused, we stop things in our culture. We don't like to push through. So when it comes to the Bible and we, we say and we gather up the courage to say, I'm going to start reading this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive in for the first time. What do we do when we start a book? Where do we start? At the beginning. And we get to the beginning and we start to go in. The Bible's actually really awesome in the beginning for like two chapters. Remember, I told you we read over a thousand. We got two chapters that are really cool. Not so bad, right? You get to chapter three and everything goes sideways. Everything is just like, what is this? You've got serpents or dragons talking. You've got naked people running around hiding in bushes. You've got angels with flaming swords. And then Adam and Eve, they start their family. And listen, if you wrestle with your family or your family of origin thinking, look how messed up we are, go read about Adam and Eve. You will feel better. God has put that in his scripture to give you hope, right? Because they start a family, and they've got two kids, Cain and Abel. And just check out what Genesis chapter 4 says. Right, we're four chapters in. So starting at the beginning, he says this in verse 8. One day, Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out to the fields. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel, and he killed him. Afterward, the Lord asked Cain, where's your brother? Where is Abel? No, I don't know. Cain responded, am I my brother's guardian? Sounds like a, like, like a teenager here, doesn't he? I don't know. We aren't even four chapters in, and this just got super crazy. I mean, what, what kind of book is this? And we begin to give up on the Bible because 
you know what, it's too hard to understand why this would be in here. So you know what, I'll just wait till Sunday when Pastor Jimmy, Pastor Will, when someone on the preaching team steps forward and starts to talk about the Bible and explain it to me because I want to know what God wants for my life, but this is just too hard to, to dig through on my own. And I want to tell you, I don't think that's going to work for us because we want to be an entire church, not a pastor or a staff or a preaching team or a board. We want to be a church that loves God, loves people, and serves the world. And if we are going to do this, we are going to have to be people who find ourselves in the Holy Scriptures on a daily basis. On Sunday mornings, I'm telling you, I do my absolute best along with this team to create sermon series that are engaging, that they're practical, and that they're very biblically deep, that you, we would understand theology. And it's fun to come up with some of these series that we do. I mean, when we did blockbuster movies, that was fun, going through the 80s, right? When we do Not What I Wanted or, you know, Backyard Barbecue, they're fun to preach. But let me tell you, these are not enough for your week because the pressures of life hit us regardless of which room we're in. By the time we leave the doors, we're tired. Because life has hit us again, and applying whatever it was on Sunday morning becomes a little bit harder. And I need to tell you that Sunday morning Bible just isn't enough. Most of us here would, would, I believe we understand and we agree with this, but we don't really live it out in every day. Now, I, I once heard it this way, and I'll tell you, um, this week it was a little weird. Um, I found myself in travels and had to run to, had to run to McDonald's once or twice. And, uh, you know, a any McDonald's hash brown fans here? Oh, come on, man. These things, I could like, I could like live on these things. And, and when I was in college, I, I tried to. Um, it was right on the way to college. And so I would, I would get hash browns all the time. And um, back in the day, uh, now they don't do this. It was funny. When I ordered these this morning, they didn't do it, and I had to ask for it. But when you order hash browns, you know, they come with all, so they, they used to come with tons of packets of ketchup. And uh, I, I love this. I used to figure out how to drive where I could rip the end off, like squeeze a little, and then bite my hash brown and be like, yeah, driving stick. It was really dangerous, but I did it, you know. Um, I was in college. I didn't really think about it, but I used to keep these in my glove compartment just in case. And if you've ever kept a ketchup packet in your glove compartment, you'll know that within five years from the time you put it there, it's still just as good <laughs> afterwards because it's McDonald's, it's just sugar and nothing else of value in this. But it's so funny because one of the guilty pleasures that I have are putting this on hash browns and I would just get these things. Now, let me ask you, th there's nothing nutritious in this, is there? There's nothing of value. Could you imagine if I genuinely tried to live my life on packets of ketchup or, you know, when you put a hot, you get a hot dog and you're like, yeah, but put all the fixing on it. Listen, sauerkraut's not going to take you that far. Ketchup, mustard, relish, you could put all the stuff on there. It's not that good. Don't get me wrong. These are all considered food. But they're not what I'm designed for, right? You see, we're designed for healthy foods. We're designed with things like, you know, Meal planning in mind, not fast food. I know some people here, you are like uber careful with everything that you eat. Some of it's because of allergies and you're forced to. Uh, but others of you, you deeply care for the body that God has given you. So you exercise, you plan out depending on if you're trying to gain weight, lose weight, run a marathon, or just keep fit, whatever it is. You've got a different metric that you are gauging what you should eat. And some of you, I know this because I've been to your homes, you go through and you will weigh out your food to make sure that you're hitting what you need to hit, right? You want to be at a certain mark to honor your body. And you do this not because you're super, um, I can't think of the right word in my head that would be appropriate for online. Um, uh, you're very uh, meticulous about what you're eating. How's that? We'll use the word meticulous. You're very meticulous. But you're not doing this just because of that. You're doing this because you don't want to have to stop at McDonald's. You don't want to have to hit Chick-fil-A and, and wait in a line for four or five hours. You see, hash browns, condiments, fast food, 
they're just not going to cut it for our lives. And you plan out and pre-portion everything so that you don't have to go. And you do this because you know that healthy foods are going to fuel you to live the best life that you could possibly live, to prepare you for whatever is coming in your day. And I believe that the absolute same thing is true about our spiritual lives as well. That very, very few of us regularly, daily jump into the Word of God to spiritually fuel this part of our life. And because of that, I think we run around spiritually malnourished like crazy. Please hear me when I say this. I am all for the Bible app on people's phones, but let me tell you, if you think that you can open your app real quick and get one to two verses and you're good to go for the day, that is like living your life on ketchup packets. You are missing the great meals that God has set for you today. And you're settling for packets in the car on the go. You know, in the New Testament, there was this um, man named Paul who was just this powerhouse for God when it came to setting up churches. And, and he would start churches in different cities. And one of his favorite cities was uh, a place called Ephesus. And he loved this place. He spent more time there than anywhere setting up a church. And then as he moved on, he took a young man that was with him named Timothy. And he said to Timothy, I need you to pastor this church. I love you and think you could do this. And I love them. I need you to do this. He says, okay. As Timothy begins to pastor the church, he's running into problems. And, and the problem is that the people are beginning to listen to false teachers. They were... They were starting to hear people talk about the Holy Scriptures, and then they would add stuff to it, or they would take away from it. They would begin to, like, skew it just a little bit to make it harder for people to follow. And so Paul, who at this point is under arrest because of his telling people about Jesus, ends up being in prison and writing letters to Timothy to try to encourage him. And in his second letter to Timothy... This is something that he reminds Timothy to remind the church about. And it was the very passage that Becky read for us where it began with remain faithful to the things that you've been taught, right? We know this passage, and, and I'm going to skip over it just a little bit here because we had it read for us. And what I need you to understand is that Paul's desire here is for the church that he loves so deeply to understand what these scriptures say. He, he mentions in verse 16 that all scripture is God-breathed. Now, when Paul is writing this, you have to understand the New Testament was being written, right? He's not writing and saying, all scripture, including my letter. You know, that's not what he's saying. He's saying the, the, what we would see is the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, those 39 books, of which you've read a bunch. He says these are God-breathed. Now, we know that the painstaking way that they created and, and picked the rest of the books of the Bible, I think we can make a great jump and, and bring our 27 into that comment that Paul, or that Paul was writing, that all scripture, all these stories of Jesus, all these letters are God-breathed. And we can apply it to the totality of the Bible. And he, he reminds this young pastor to, the, to say to this church, like, listen, you have to teach this church, to dive into the Bible, to get into it. Why? He tells us that all scripture is inspired by God and is, this is why, it's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and it teaches us to do what's right. Why do we have to dive into the Bible? Because pastor said so. No, no, no. We, we dive in because this is so useful for our lives. It gives us a direction to follow. It's not just a book to point out like, here's the good things that you can do in life, or here's where you're so awesome. But it reveals the parts of our life where we're not lined up with loving like God and loving Him. Does anybody else have issues not loving God and people besides me? Come on. Sometimes it's really tough to read the Bible. Do you know why? It's convicting. It's just convicting. I don't want to read the Bible because I don't like to be convicted sometimes. I already beat myself up enough. Why would I go invite more, right? But I'll tell you what, I need those moments more than anything. 
I need those moments of where I'm not aligning with Christ more than once a week. And Paul reminds them, you've got to read the Bible to remain in it, to learn it, to teach it to your kids, because it'll change your kids' lives too. What an advantage kids have if they learn what the Bible says, right? This is not an adult book. Well, in some regards it is, but the values of it need to be taught to us by children. At least that's the way that Jesus approached it, right? God uses all of this, as he said, God uses it to prepare and to equip his people to do every good work. This is not, just as Pastor Will said, about making us better people or so that we would know more about the Bible. You know why we read scripture is to align with God and so that our hearts are prepared to do what God has already prepared in advance for us to do, that we would see what he's doing and step into that. And I worry that so many of us, we miss these opportunities because we're not prepared in our hearts because we have not been with God. We miss amazing opportunities to do things for Jesus and to love people because we're not prepared and equipped. I don't want this to happen in my life. I, I don't want this to be your story. And I sure do not want this to be the story of Crossbridge. I dream about us being a church that grounds ourselves on the daily, regular reading of the Word of God, full feasts every single day with Jesus. And I recognize even now that we look different as a church than we did three years ago when we introduced soap for the first time. Some of you have found so much hope in a regular rhythm of reading the Bible. For those of you who have showed up since COVID and now you're part of our community, I want the same for you, that you would understand when a, note, uh, a letter comes your way with a note card and, and a guide that, that this is why we're doing it. This is why for the next three or four weeks we're going to talk about soaping together. So I am asking that everyone who is at and a part of Crossbridge, whether you're here in person, whether you are joining us online, that for the next 40 days, my challenge and invitation to you is to commit to reading the Bible every single day together. I want to make this as well as easy as possible for you. Right? So what I'd love for you to do is if you're sitting on the ends of the seats, if you could go ahead underneath you, and there is a guide and a pen, like a stack of them. If you could go ahead and take that whole thing, hand it out to the people in your row. And if you are joining us online, there is a link going into the chat right now that has uh, a link to a PDF version of this guide. Because wherever you are watching from, we want to make sure that you're joining us as well. Okay? So do me a favor. Make sure everybody gets one. And okay, if you're like, no, I don't want one. You don't have to give me one. Uh, yeah, take one now because I'm going to stare at you and you could walk out with it and be like, all right, I don't know, I'll just put it in my car and not read it. Fine, but I want to make sure it's in your hands. So if you have it in your hands real quick, go ahead and raise it up for me. And if you're not raising it up, I could see it and the person next to you will point you out. Come on, I see it. Yeah, I see you. I'm looking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Karen. <laughs> all right, good, good. Everybody's got your guide. So online, you can click it, download it. Here's what's going to be really cool. There's a couple things you're going to need to soap with us together. The first thing that you're going to need is a Bible. Okay, the first thing you're going to need is a Bible. What kind of Bible? You ready for this? A readable one. A readable one. If you speak like old English, you want to go with a KJV or NKJV, go for it. Have some fun. Um, you don't get bonus points in heaven for reading that version. But maybe some of you, that's familiar and you love it. Go for it. I'm reading through, uh, I actually started with this Bible when we started soaping last time, and it's the NLT, and I kind of prayed about it and was like, Lord, should I go with a different version? But I didn't feel like, nah, I really have loved this version. Some of you, your NIV people, your message people, oh, listen, I really don't care what you're using. It doesn't matter. So you're going to need a Bible that's readable, all right? The second thing that you're going to need is your soap guide. Now, let me just tell you, this is not any old soap guide that you have in your hands or on your computer. You know what this is? This is a soap guide especially designed for you by the people around you right now. This is 40 days where there are certain questions through different chapters where instead of just reading a single book like we normally do, we're going to be going 40 days through the entire Bible and trying to get a big picture of what's the themes of the Bible. And so 
most of these chapters are written by the people who are around you. So if, if you've actually written a chapter in our soap guide, just throw your hand up for me really quick so everybody can check that out. These are people who have invested in you by writing for this, and even people who do not live in New Jersey but who join us online have contributed to this because they're regular with us there. So you're going to need your soap guide. And the last or the next two things, you're going to need a pen. Okay, you're going to need a pen. This sounds weird. If you cannot find a pen in your house, steal one from your kid's backpack. They have all your pens, all of them, and your chargers, okay? And the last thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a place and a time. You're going to need a place and a time. This may be the hardest thing for you to find. We can give you the pen. We can give you a Bible if you don't have one. We have some in the back. We can give you the guide, but we cannot give you a place and time. You're going to have to find something that works for your schedule and your routine. I have a regular place. Three years ago, it was different, but right now, there is a corner of my house that everyone jokes about when they come over because my Jesus chair is there. And if one of my kid's friends sit in it, all people look at him like, what? Like, that's the Jesus chair. What? You could sit in there if you're hanging out with Jesus. And they're like, is he live in the chair? Like, well, yeah. they, they don't know, but it's my holy place. It's very sacred to me. I don't mess around in that chair. That's where I go to meet with Jesus. It's like my little tabernacle that I set up. And I know that my, that's my place. My time is when my kids get on the bus. Because at that point, I'm not needed for anything. And I can dedicate whatever time. I feel like is needed in that place, but I try to find that as best I can. I'll tell you, my seasons do change. It was not like that over the summer. I, I was more regular in the evenings because I, I'm not a fan of mornings. I don't like mornings. Some of you, you wake up at like three, ready to go, and you're like, I ran 18 miles today. And I'm like, why? You know, like, <laughs> I don't understand it. I would much rather be up late, but I know for me, I need to be up early in this season to have that time with Jesus and the lack of sleep. Going to bed before two, while it's difficult for me, is worth it to spend time with Jesus earlier. You have to find a place and commit to that place. And you have to find a time that you know is somewhat regular in your schedule. And if you're thinking, I don't have the time, make it. Put it on your calendar and mark it out for a 15-minute block. Literally put a reminder to it. And when it says location, put your holy place. If you can't get away from people, bathroom. No one will bug you, hopefully, unless they stick their fingers under the door. So this is what we're going to do, okay? And we're going to look at each of the letters of SOAP over the next four weeks and unpack them so we understand why they're important and what we're going to do. When you start to SOAP, when you spend this time, this is what you're going to do. The S in SOAP stands for Scripture. Okay, it stands for scripture. We're going to be going through the story of the Bible, and we are not starting just in Genesis. If you looked at the first page of your guide, you'll see we're starting in John chapter 1. We're going to start the first five days of our eight themes that we're going through, just looking at Jesus, his teaching, and who he is, because he's our focus, right? And if he's our focus, this is where we're going to start. And you do not have to read the Bible in order. It's 66 individual books that have been put together as a collection. And so you don't have to start in Genesis and end in Revelation. You can start at any book you want. And if you're like, I've never read the Bible, I'd like to start at, just ask someone for help before you just pick a random book because some of it can get pretty crazy, okay? And we want to make sure that when we're reading that there's this engagement. So we've, we've planned it all out for you. 40 days to walk through the whole Bible, 20 in the Old Testament, 20 in the New and I will tell you, like I said a second ago, I'm an old school guy who likes to have a paper Bible. Um, I know some of you are excellent at using your Bible app because you don't get distracted by things coming in on your phone. You could stay locked in. I personally can't, so I like a paper Bible. You use whatever works best for you, but we will always start in Scripture. We will start here, and all you're simply going to do is read the chapter. I start by praying, Holy Spirit, would you speak to me? And then just read the chapter. And if you're thinking, but I got to learn it, but I got to know it, but I got to understand it. No, you don't. No, you, no, you don't. It's okay if you don't understand everything. It's okay if you don't have answers. It's okay if you question it and go, I don't like that. Text me. I'll probably say, amen. It's convicting, isn't it? Don't get caught up in all the details to begin with. If something's confusing, 
write it down like this is confusing. I don't know what to do with this. If something makes sense to you, circle it, underline it. My Bible's full of pen marks because it's just become this place of like journaling for me with Jesus. But make sure you read the whole chapter and just find any one thing that might make sense to you, okay? When you've started with scripture, this is now the time that you could pull out your guide. If I can encourage you, do not read your guide before you read the chapter. Because my fear is that if you start with your guide, the guide is meant to help with the ope of soap. It's secondary to scripture. You do not have to answer all the questions that are in the guide. Each person who has contributed is given like five to seven questions for the sole purpose of trying to help in the process of the O and the A, right? To give you things to think about, to help along. There's no bonus points for completion. You don't get a sticker at the end or a trophy saying, I did everything, right? That is not the goal here. The goal is that, that for some people, you may resonate with some chapters in the way that people wrote their questions and go, man, I love the way that person thinks. And others, you're gonna go, what in the world are they thinking? That's great because someone else loves this person and is confused over here. If you start by reading the questions, you're gonna be trying to answer them for completion, to say you did it. This is not about completion, this is about transformation, amen? This is why we wanted so many voices in the guide. So you're gonna start with your observation, or your scripture, then you're gonna go to observation. Once you read the passage, just you jot down a verse or two in your observation. It's things that jumped out at you. They're like, oh, you, if it's maybe a question, what, what was confusing to you or meaningful to you? What verses jumped out to you? Was there something that was encouraging that you're like, oh, I want to remember that? Write it down in your guide. Underline it in your Bible. Maybe just circle the question in the guide that makes you think more. You're like, hmm. I don't know what to do with this one. Just circle it. That's an observation. You do not have to write a sermon. You don't have to write a devotional. This is just what you're seeing, okay? That's it. Simple is ideal. Simple is fine. Then you'll move to application. Application is, uh, how does this impact your day? So what? You read the Bible. It's not about a check mark to say, done. This is about transforming into the image of Christ for the sake of others. How do you apply what's jumped out to you to your day? How can you search out maybe some answers for what you're confused with? This is not a time where you're trying to go crazy deep and think, I need to change my entire life, you know, direction because maybe the Lord gives you that. But I just think sometimes we make things way too complicated and the Lord's speaking something simple. Something simple. What simply can you live out in your life today? Write it down. And then we end in prayer. Take a moment. And if you can, I like to write out my prayers because I can see a rhythm. But ask God to help you apply the word that you've observed through his scripture. Does that make sense? Close your Bible. Your guide, you stick them in a place where you can grab them tomorrow in your holy place, and then you rinse, you lather, you repeat. This is soaping. This is our plan for the next 40 days. And I'm asking you, inviting you, to join me, to join each other in this journey together through the Bible. I believe the time for fast food and condiment spirituality is over. It's time to take some responsibility for your own relationship with God. It is not my job or the staff's job or the elder's job or the board's job to force you to read the Bible. We can't force you to do anything, but we can invite you to follow us as we follow Christ. It is time to eat well. It is time to fuel our spiritual body with real food so that we can take our steps towards Jesus to do what God has prepared in advance for us to do. As we move in our service to a time where we receive communion together. I'm gonna to invite our worship team to come up. I, I just wanna encourage you, if I can. Listen, if you find yourself missing a day and you're like, ah, you know what? The day just got away from me. It was too busy. I, I was out late and therefore, you know, I, I slept in and I missed what I was doing and oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do? And you missed it. Do me a favor. Show yourself some grace. Show yourself some grace. 
you're going to miss days. I understand it. The worst thing that you could do is if you missed one day and then two days and three days is to say, I'm going to make it up and go back and do. This is not about making up your chapters or completing this guide. This is about spending time with the creator of your soul who loves you so deeply and desires you to be conformed into his image to love others, to receive his love. Just pick up at whatever day we're on. What if, what if I don't have the right answers and someone in my small group asks? Do me a favor. Just tell them, I didn't read that chapter. We need people in our groups who are going to say that so that there's enough honesty to go, Whew, it's not just me. I get that life is crazy sometimes, but the enemy of God is out to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and he will do everything he can to distract you from this time. Because this is the time we get to hear from God who loves us. And so I'm begging you, show yourself some grace this week. Show yourself some grace. If you miss it, just get back on the next day. If you miss two days, get back on the third day. Whatever you need to do, and if, if it's helpful, and you're like, I miss all the time, talk to the people in your life group and say, man, I need some accountability. Someone in your small group, in your life group, they'll text you every day. They will just for encouragement. I have received that from my guys. I know that. And so this is what I'm inviting you to. Let's start soaping together. The next 40 days, you'll find extra guides in the back, cards in the back, small gr or life group signups at the table right over there. If this is best done in community. You will find time with God on your own to be amazing, but you are going to need other people to go, what the heck was that? We need each other for this get into a group. Let's do this together. And for the next 40 days, let's see what Jesus has for us. Amen? Amen.